Oh, 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 that's right. I can't use a quote for this character because he didn't say a thing. This is going to be particularly exciting because I have a feeling that this is going to be one of my favorite Rise of the Beast Studio Series figures in this entire line because of just how awesome he looks. He looks so aggressive and tactical and very intimidating in both robot and alt mode and I really do feel he's going to crush the mainline release for this character in my opinion. So let's get him open. Rhinox is here. Alfonso, this is Optimus Prime. Transform. What's good, Alfonso Nation? Welcome back, everybody, in here and out there, everywhere, to another episode, another rendition of Teletran Unboxings. We've been cranking these out because so many incredible figures have been releasing in the recent past, and this is no exception. This figure is going to be incredible. This character was incredible. I always admired the designs for the Maximals in Rise of the Beasts. I just felt like their design from the moment they were like revealed I knew that they were just like one of the best visual representations for these characters in history in my opinion they look so incredible they have a nice blend of organic with like mechanical and cybertronian and they have just this giant presence on screen now i didn't get this guy from any particular store this video is not partnered or sponsored by anybody but i did get him from target that's where he's being stocked on shelves and i did not get him in person myself but a fellow alfonso nation exec big shout out to jake prime who is also the voice of my intro he sings and he does a lot of great work so go check Check out Jake Prime's channel. It is in the description box below. Thank you so much, man, for helping me out with this figure because my area was not stocking him. And as I record this video, he's nowhere to be found. Today we have the one and the only Studio Series 103 Rhinox. This design is so good. I love his roar. I love the mechanics around like, like his mouth when he roars. The glowing effect in his eyes and his mouth. I really thought he was able to breathe fire from one of the images that we saw of Rhinox where he had like the glowing effect, like the fire effect. But he didn't breathe fire. He didn't really do much of anything outside of the final battle, which I would have wanted so much more of him. Nevertheless, he looks incredible on screen, and this is the official studio series of him. And I have the main line. You probably can see it back there. But I don't like the main line, just to be honest with you. I don't like the, the squared, boxy design. I don't like the big, fat flap on the legs. I think this accomplishes it better because this is more tailored to the live action rendition. Packaging, same thing as other Studio Series packaging. It is Transformers, 103 Rhinox, beautiful art, and you get to see him there. And then 103, there you go, that's on the side, and then on the other side, Rhinox, and then boom, on the back, robot and alt mode, looks incredible. Da, 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 dang, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's. That looks so good, bro. What? That is what I'm screaming. That is what I am screaming. That is what I'm screaming. I'm already a huge fan of it. Ah, he just looks so beefy and rough and tough and muscular and tactical and uh, I'm a tough one. <laughs> Rise, Rhinox. Oh, dude, this is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> nice Voyager figure. His leg actually fell off. Okay, well that, hopefully that's just from packaging and not how it does normally. Overall, my initial reaction is, though, is, is pretty solid. I think he has nice tight uh, joints on the arms. The shoulder compresses nice. Does he have waist? He has waist swivel. Yes, okay. He doesn't have any, like, uh, abdominal crunch because there's a lot of, a lot of chunk in that bunk. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I like it. I think it's really nice. I think he really cleans up. A lot of silver, a lot of silver. But nevertheless, check him out. Rhinox has risen. Now, his joints on his knees, little loose. This is, you know, like, if I hold him, you see, like, if I hold him, he's gonna fall back. So I gotta hold him like by the knee. But I will try to adjust everything I can with the screws and hopefully that improves the overall posability and 
that he holds up together. But just looking at the figure itself, he looks incredible. He has a really nice presence. You can definitely tell this is a live action version of Rhinox. This is a Rhinox from the movie franchise rather than, you know, any of the cartoon franchises. And I love how unique he is because a lot of the Rhinoxes we've gotten in the past, if you look at the Kingdom Rhinox, if you look at the other G1 based Rhinoxes, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much like mostly the same. They have a couple variations, but mostly it's the same like, you know, cartoon style. Whereas I love how this guy completely stands out. He's way sharper, more tactical. Some of the angles and the edges look a lot more live action-esque. And it just has a really nice presence in my view. Like, I think he really holds up way better as a Rise of the Beasts Rhinox than any of the other ones. Now, the only thing that he comes with is his mace, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's the only thing that he really used in the film is the mace. So there it is. I love how it looks like a meat tenderizer. <laughs> With the little like prongs of spikes on the end and then you have just like the like the base of it it's just the same like uh plastic and painting as you see on the main figure itself mainly in the chest section uh but then you have the stem you know the handle very cool though like i'm glad that we have that weapon storage he didn't really have any other like blaster or anything you know these maximos are hands-on and that's one of the main things i love about them is you know, they don't really rely too much on blasters. I mean, Air Razor was blasting fire, but like aside from that, like an actual blaster, that was reserved for more like the Autobots and Terracon. So the backpack cleans up incredibly well. I'm incredibly impressed with the backpack. Like it really looks like a back. Aside from the tail here, it just looks like a back, like a regular back. And I'm I'm, I'm a big fan of how, how well it cleans up. Articulation, shoulder pack comes up, arm comes up, comes down, swivel right here, arm comes up here, bend like that wrist rotates waist rotation boom leg comes out comes down rotation at the hip comes up knee kick comes back down it does go back as well i don't know if i showed that off there you go pivot up and down and take tiltage to the to the like inwardly hit doesn't really look up too much i had a feeling it wouldn't but it does kind of look side to side a little bit and that's about as good as it's gonna get but overall i love him like so freaking cool i even love how he looks with his mace like you can pull up some nice poses with him with his mace looks great he has the maximo logo in the chest but it's like silver like he is so it's not visible if it was black it would be way way better because it would pop out, it would stand out. So I do wish the Maxima logo was at least like a graphite. If it wasn't going to be black, at least a graphite. Let's take a look at the background. I don't know what it is, actually. Let's see what we got. What is this? I can predict that's probably where, you know, Noah and Elena went to find the Maximal tomb. Ah, uh, that's the only thing I can say. I don't know where the... Is this the Maximal lair that we didn't get in the movie? Bro, because his bio says... That he charges onto the scene to protect the maximal lair from intruders. Air Razor's bio says that the that the that Air Razor leads the Autobots to the maximal lair. There's a maximal lair, and I always was like, what, what are they talking about? <laughs> they were in the jungle. Is that the lair? It, it can't be the lair. They have to have an actual like ancient stone structured area. Is this the maximal lair that we never saw in the film, bro? I'm gonna ask Stephen Cable Jr. about that. This would have been cool to see an actual Maximal Air. This has to be some of the early stuff because that's what happened with Scourge. His design is not 100% with the movie because it's based on concept art because the movie was delayed a year. And these figures are based on how they were supposed to look at that time rather than this year. So this Maximal Air concept probably was scrapped in that time frame. Oh my god. Anyway, but yeah, that that's... That's the background. And now to do some comparisons to show what he looks like alongside other Transformers Rise of the Beasts characters. Here he is with the Transformers Studio Series Rise of the Beasts Bumblebee Deluxe Class. This guy is so freaking nice. I love Bumblebee so much. He's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Deluxe Bumblebee Transformers figure for Studio Series. Like, that's how much I love his design. That's how much I love this figure of this design. Incredible figure. And this is how he looks next to Rhinox. And I think that looks really awesome. Awesome. Next up, here he is with the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Cheetor. Yes, the Maximals uniting, baby. We have two Studio Series Maximals. We are collecting them like freaking Infinity Stones. But the biggest stone is going to be that leader, Optimus Primal. Bro, I cannot freaking wait. It looks so incredible. I can't wait for him. He's the last of this lineup because I have Air Razor as well. It's going to be 
a wonderful day when I acquire that beauty. Next up, here he is with the Transformers Rise of the Beast mainline Rhinox. Yes, this is the one that I had pretty much as a placeholder awaiting the big honcho. The substitute teacher and the teacher <laughs> has arrived. And yeah, that's, that's, man, night and day. This is what I've been waiting for because that mainline is just... It's just not a solid representation of him in the movie. I am not a really a fan of it, to be completely honest. And so I'm so glad that I finally have the Studio Series. Next up here is the Studio Series newly acquired Rise of the Beast, Optimus Prime, the main man, the honcho man, the king is here. That's him with uh, Rhinox. Super cool. Love Rhinox and love Prime. So yeah, I love them two together. Scale's working out great so far. Studio Series knows what they're doing. And last up, here he is with the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Scourge. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Scourge, man, if he was if he was more tailored to his newer design for Rise of the Beast, this would have been even better. But I'm okay with how it looks. It still captures their aesthetics. It still captures their presence. You still know who they are in this movie. And it's close enough. And I think it looks incredible. So there he is with Scourge. And these figures, who might be also in your collection. In general, I think he's incredible. I think he's going to hold up really well alongside other figures that are for Rise of the Beast, the studio series at least. I think he's uh, probably the best, like, you know, visual rendition of what we got in the movie. Even though it's not 100% and there's some, like, color variations and some different differences it still captures the aesthetic better in my view than the mainline so it's one of the best ones that we've gotten and he looks really really good and i have no complaints with his visual appeal i will say from handling him now i haven't really spent a lot of time with him but i handled him and he kind of pop you know there's pieces that pop off quite often and his joints are quite loose and some of the pieces that are on the little like little mushroom pegs they pop off easy so he's not really holding up well with handling he feels okay but he's not holding up as sturdy as he looks like he would for my figure my copy obviously there's others so we'll see if this is widespread or just exclusively to mine overall the actual visual presence is amazing and his rhino mode is gorgeous he looks incredible alongside the other maximals you can pull up a lot of poses with him he just blends in perfectly for rise of the beasts and i think he is worth the money 100 if you get him at msrp so without further ado the final verdict if i have to rate studio series rhinox on a scale from one to ten i will give him a solid eight out of ten i think he holds up well with visuals i think he has a really solid presence when it comes to his robot and alt mode but i feel like he really falls off when it comes to some of the handling and the sturdiness and things remaining in place when you're posing them and some of the posability is limited you know obviously with the, like the like the head looking around but if we look at the general scope of it i think it is totally worth the money for a transformers rise of the beasts figure that's it for this unboxing hope you guys enjoyed it if you did drop a like on it if you're new subscribe if you have any comments questions or concerns about this figure put it in the comment section below if i can find a link of where you can find this guy that is in stock at the time of shooting this i'll put it in the description box below and that is all for today thanks for watching thank you jake prime once again for helping me acquire this guy and i can't wait for more figures rise of the beast the freaking mirage the the in-hand images of him the studio series mirage was just revealed today and i'm just like oh my god give me i'm all in for studio series rise of the beast so yeah this is not gonna be the last so yeah that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one till all are one let's go